Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Resident Evil Remake Remastered. We are in the underground research lab beneath the Spencer Mansion, so I'm pretty sure it's safe to say at this point, we are in the endgame. Uh, that's probably going to be the last kerosene refill. I'm taking my chances though, and I don't have my fuel canteen on me. This environment's lovely. Like, it just oozes with mood. Which is saying a lot, because the rest of the game has been pretty moody. Uh, I wasn't expecting a second MO disc. Covered in acid. That's locked. Uh, I think I'm gonna get grabbed if I... Yeah, if I make this screen transition. I'm not super worried about getting grabbed anymore. I've come to this with, like, let's see... Three taser batteries and five daggers, so I have... Eight defensive items left in total. Uh, getting grabbed is not... A threatening proposition at this point. If I come up against a hunter or a crimson head or something like that, that's a bigger deal because they will not grab me. They'll just attack me. But yeah, standard zombies right now, not the most threatening things. Actually, it's weird that... Oh god, I see. I understand why they ha why they put that kerosene refill up there, come to think of it. Uh, because it'd be weird to put that there if you're not going to be spending a lot of time in the lab. Either the Crimson Heads will respawn quicker now, or... we're going to be spending so much time down here that it's going to give the zombies time to come back as Crimson Heads. I think someone said before it takes like an hour or an hour and a half, but that might speed up. Uh, so is this puzzle going to be based around... Because it said put the, uh, put the names on the x-rays in alphabetical order, right? So... Should that be last name or first name? I'm guessing last name, because it goes last, uh, surname, first name. Okay, and that's Clark. Uh, how do the organs factor into this, though? Not super clear on that. Researcher's letter. June 8th, 1998. My dearest Ada, by the time you read this letter, I'll no longer be the person you once knew. The results of my test came out today, and as, as I suspected, it came out positive. That Ada Wong references. I feel like I'm teetering on the edge of reason just thinking about my impending doom. I would give anything not to, not to have to become one of them. As far as I know, you're not infected. I sincerely hope things do not reach such a desperate pass, but if it has turned out that you are now the last person remaining alive, I want you to get the material from the visual data room. Then, activate the self-destruct system in the power room and escape from here. Please do everything in your power to make this whole accident public. If everything is still running normally, you should be able to release all the locks using the security system. I've set up the terminal in the small security room so that you can log into the system using my name and your name as the password. You will need another password to release the lock of the door in basement level 2, where the visual data room is located. As a safety measure, I have coded the password into an x-ray picture. Uh, a Rowent- a Rowent genogram? I know you, and I'm sure you'll be able to work it out without any trouble. The hell is that? Uh, there's just one more thing, and it's my last request. I hope you- I hope you never have to lay eyes on me in this state, but if you do happen to run into me in my hideous form, I beg you to put me out of my misery. I hope you understand. Thank you, Ada. Yours truly, John. Um, that's not a reference I was expecting to see. Ada Wong, if you're not familiar with Resident Evil history or lore, is a spy for an organization headed up by the traitor from Stars, who will find out his identity later on. Uh, she became the lover of an umbrella researcher here at the Arkley Lab named John Clemens. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is I want to put the names on the x-rays in alphabetical order. That's Alex Beckett, so that should be the first one. Let's see. It's Ed Fisher. Did I go to the third one or the second one? I inspected this. It looks like the third. Oh, it's kind of hard to pick which one to, ex to inspect. That's Clark David. He should be second, probably. I'm not sure which two got swapped. Because it doesn't give you the option, I don't think. Yeah, okay, so that's Clark. No. Ed Fisher. It sounds like it should probably be... Yeah, okay. So they are in alphabetical order. What do their names... Because it's 
what was it? It was ACFG or something? Ah, uh, that the, the organs have to factor into it. What about the switch? Okay. What does that reveal? Parts of air glowing red? Uh, I'm not sure I get this. Is there something in the red part? Um, what am I not seeing here? What am I not getting? Oh god, there's some part of this I'm missing that I... Let me try exchanging the positions, even though I know I have them in the right order. Just trying to get some new perspective. Uh, God, I think I might come back to this later. Sometimes when you get stuck on a puzzle, the best thing you can do, if you have the option, is to walk away from it for a little bit. And then uh, come back to it later with a fresh perspective. Uh, one problem that you sometimes run into with uh, abstract problems or logic problems is you get into this functional fixedness state and walking away from it for a little bit allows you to release from that functional fixedness and uh, come at it with a novel perspective. So, oops, I didn't mean to go this way. Uh, so if you walk away from a problem for a little bit, sometimes that's the best thing you can do rather than just banging your head against a wall. Ah, uh, you're not quite dead, are you? Ah, well. Guessing I'm gonna have a Crimson Head to deal with later. Uh, I don't think I'll have anything to deal with upstairs. Yeah, I got grabbed by one, and I dodged the other. So we have one dead zombie in the hall. Ooh. Magnum rounds, yes! Okay. Dude, I love the labs down here. The music is... Oh, hold on. V-A-C-T. There's now evidence that when the host loses consciousness, the body goes into a dormant state. During this time, the virus becomes active and rapidly transforms and reconstructs the basic composition of the body. Oh, uh, that's bullshit. The host eventually mutated into a humanoid creature. We call them V-Acts. Uh, its speed and amazing muscular development in particular are particularly noteworthy. After the transformation, it becomes more agile and aggressive. Already four of our researchers have died from trying to feed it. <laughs> um, turning the place into an instant bloodbath. Ever since this tragic and barbaric accident, we have decided to call it its kind Crimson Heads. Holy shit. That dangerous and precious prototype specimen <laughs> can't be left there. We have to figure out a way to deal with it. Termination is definitely not an option. Why not? We finally decided to freeze the specimen and find the body inside the basement of the backyard cemetery. Oh, that's a great place for it. Oh, that's the, um, the prototype Crimson Ed we saw. Uh, so the password were the, the two names, so it was John and Ada. Which name comes first, actually? Uh, let's try John's first. I can't, I can't remember if he just said the name and the password are our names, or if he said which order they go in. Oh well, it's... There are only two possibilities, so per force that. <laughs> uh, can we unlock both? That's cool. Oh no, this is ah, uh, this is what they were talking about. I do need that second password, and I get that second password from um the X-ray puzzle. So I have to go back there before I can progress any. Fuck, this is cool. Oh, this is so good. Oh, this room. This is like the exact combination of tone, mood, and atmosphere that made me completely love um, the section from the island in RE4 where you first run into the uh, the regenerators. Oh my god, that's so good. I love this setting. Fuck, this is good. Oh, what a good-ass way to end the game. It's so creepy down here. 
That's locked. Symbol resembling a power area? Okay. Oh, that's where uh, John wanted Ada to go. Speaking of which, is that John? Is that John's zombified body? A huge spinning fan. Whoa. Oh, you're still up. Uh, let's get a little bit closer and... Man, I'm not popping any heads today. Oh my god, this area is fucking awesome. Um, I'm seeing about the limits of the size of this uh, central square-shaped hallway. And then there's a door to the northeast. There are two doors to the southeast. Uh, there's this door. And trying to like mentally model the land of this place. Hey, did that turn off? Okay, yeah, okay, I think I see this now. Um, God, I don't know how I didn't realize this earlier. I understand this now. This makes so much sense. Um, so there are certain or organs highlighted in red. And they sync up to the organs on this chart. So we had what? Um... Okay, this is just a matching puzzle now. So, colon... I'm just trying to memorize this a little bit. I should know the organs better than this. Okay. The lungs... Okay, I got this. It's uh the colon, the liver, the lungs, and the esophagus. That still doesn't quite tell me what the password is, but I think I get it. Uh, colon, liver, lungs, esophagus. Oh no, in order, it would be colon, esophagus, liver, lungs. So... What do I do with that to get the password? Is it the first letter? Because that would be C-E-L-L. Cell. Okay. Yeah, I got this. John. Password is Ada again. And then the password to unlock the sub-level basement should be Cell. If I did that puzzle right. Or if I understand the puzzle correctly. Oh, that's really good. That's like, that's one of the more clever puzzles that we've seen in the game so far. Is that right? Yeah! Yeah, that's definitely one of the more elaborate ones we've seen. I think we just got a good model, uh, a wireframe view of the layout of this place. That's cool. Oh man, I, I, I'm really at home in the Spencer Mansion. Like, I, I grew really attached to that place and the layout of it, but holy shit! This is such a big departure, but I, I, I'm totally on board for this. The lab is turning out to be a fucking really good location. Oh, hey! What the f- Yeah, you came back really quick. That was- that couldn't have been more than ten minutes for that dude to come back as a Crimson Ad. That's scary. Oh, we have problems to deal with now. I might... Yeah, I should have at least one more Crimson Head coming up to deal with, um... At the southwest end of the hallway. That I killed, like, five minutes ago. You coming back yet? Oh, man. Yeah, I was right. That's why they give you the kerosene. Because now that you're in the endgame, I guess they're coming back much, much quicker. From here, though, I don't... What actually did unlock? Because I think it should be the uh, room upstairs, but I'm not sure if anything else did. There are... Oh, man, there are more rooms down here that I didn't notice before. Glad I checked the map. That's nice. Incendiary rounds. Or incendiary shells. 
take this sl the slide filter? Ooh, x-ray photograph skeleton structure. Displayed isn't quite human. Skip through that too quick. Yeah, don't touch all that clear liquid in there. Oh, or is this John? Seems to be something... Uh... Warning, fuel may explode if shaken or jarred. There's nothing in here, though. Yeah, that's empty. Uh, also, I am running out of space, because I decided to keep the Magnum and the grenade launcher with me throughout this whole thing. To the Sanitation Division, Manager of Sanitation, Raccoon Disaster Contingency Committee. The contents of this fax are confidential and intended for the named addressee only. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. After reading the contents of this fax, must be destroyed immediately. We expect significant uh, increase in the damage done by the recent T-virus outbreak that initially estimated there are several concerns. First concern. <laughs> this is really silly. More than half of the researchers have been infected by the T-virus and died. It has also been reported that almost all the survivors of the accident are starting to show symptoms of the T-virus infection. It's how plainly nonchalantly stated this is that gets me. Uh, our secret security patrol team has been has also been completely eradicated. Therefore, most of our research is in danger of public disclosure. Quick actions are demanded to prevent mass media coverage. There is a high possibility that most of the specimens are running loose inside the compound. We expect many casualties to follow. However, yet unfortunate, these casualties underscore the success of our research results. Uh, actions must be taken to prevent our research results from being made public. We suspect the first official intervention will come from the state police and stars. We strongly recommend taking measures against them first. It's like nonchalantly stating, yeah, all our researchers got infected and they're dead now. This is why I was waiting to see. Uh, that MO disc reader? Yeah, that's cool. Um... In the original version of Remake, those disc readers looked like big game cubes, uh, and they have changed the look of them because the game's no longer a GameCube exclusive, unfortunately. I wish that GameCube Easter egg stayed in, though. Uh, I'm wondering what this is all about. I guess I'll be taking something back here later. Fuel may explode if shaken or jar. That worries me a lot. And they do something different to highlight that. In um, every bit of text we've come across so far has been uh, subtitled in white. That is the only thing I think that we've come across that is in red. Uh, so they clearly want that to stand out to you. Oh, the okay. So the mo disc reader. There. Are there have to be three of them, because they are what unlock those locks back there. How shitty would it be if you just forgot about the uh, tiger eye puzzle? And you got to the end of the laboratory, and there was still one more of those left. And you had to go all the way back to the, the tiger statue just to get that one MO disc. Uh, so I'm going to head back up the stairs, because straight across from here, there should be another door that is hopefully unlocked. Yeah, no more Crimson Heads. Or no more Crimson Head from that guy. No more possibility of it. The other memo that that just killed me was the one about how four researchers died trying to feed the the the, the first Crimson Head. The progenitor Crimson Head. Okay, there's my third disc. I'm not seeing me. Oh shit. I do not have that. <laughs> Ah, oh, okay. What do we have around? I don't have tons of inventory space, so picking this up is going to be a problem. Uh, no, actually, it's going to be impossible. Security protocols. Uh, heliport for executive use only. This restriction does not apply in the event of an emergency. Passage to the heliport entry is prohibited unless accompanied by the consultant researcher. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Elevator, the elevator stops. Uh, visual data room for use by the special research division only. All other access to the visual data room must be cleared with Keith Arving, room manager. Uh, sanitation division controls the use of the prison. 
at least one consultant researcher, E. Smith, S. Ross, A. Wesker, must be present. Triple locked door. Entry into the room is limited to the sole person who deactivates the lock with all of the passcodes. In this room, nitro compound is used as the primary fuel source of power. Access is limited to the headquarters supervisors. This restriction may not apply. Okay. Yeah, that's just nothing. Okay. Powered by a nitro compound and a Wesker. Pas uh, terminals is limited to authorized senior, blah, blah, blah. Regarding the progress of Tyron after the administration of T-Virus, illegible hereafter. So that kind of spills the beans. Albert Wesker. The leader of our star squad. We now know the identity of the traitor. Uh, it's Wesker. I have read that you can actually hear Wesker's voice uh, in that cutscene with Barry in the original game, the one where you're in the uh, the guardhouse when Barry's, you know, being held over a barrel. The tyrant. Oh, these are all the enemies. Cool. I need to see Wesker there. Yeah, Wesker's the trait. Eight three four one seven zero six two three. Ah. I have some ideas about this. Neptune, that's where you learn the name of the shark. So let's try 8341 first, because I think it's a four-digit code. It's got to be, like, some combination of this. 0623 also seems possible. Let's try the first four letter, uh, the first four numbers first. Let's go to entry... So eight two or eight three uh, four one, error, arrow, arrow. Okay, what was what were the last four? The last four were flip through this um zero six two three zero six two three zero six two three zero six two three. Uh, there's a problem. There is no zero. I'm getting stuck in some dumb ways on these puzzles. I forgot I had the, uh, the slide filter on here. Yeah, that... Okay. 8462. There we go. It blocks out the rest of the numbers uh, below the barcode. 8462. That took longer than it should have to figure out, considering I had the filter right there in my inventory. Okay, that worked. Hopefully I can... Yeah, I just cleared some space out so I can pick the shotgun shells up. And... Ah, I'm one shy of being able to clear that spot out again. Okay. That's a nice looking laboratory key. Oh shit, can it's film! I forgot I had that! <sighs> Okay, that's that's neat, I guess. I thought it was going to be something more significant than that. Like there was actually going to be some kind of revelation. No, I'm not going to watch that again. Um this a cool little weird easter egg. Huh. Okay. Um. I wish it was more significant or more substantial. Should be able to just walk straight past you, right? Is, or are you a crimson head? I'm not sure. Looks a little red. Hmm. No, I'm just popping your head. There we go. I was worried if I tried to run past him on the stairs, uh, that he would actually turn out to be a crimson head. He would just fuck me up. That's okay. Uh, it gave me a chance to reload my shotgun and get rid of that extra shell. Uh, so now what can we do with this key card? There's the room here in the southeast. Does that open up now? Yeah. It's 
It's rusted shut. I'm gonna have to open that from the other side. There's a T-shaped hallway here. Wow, this the underground lab, for some reason I was expecting it to be kind of tiny, but it's it sprawls out uh, in this cool little web shape. And then this looks like the only other way I can go. Now, how many more paths branch off of this is the question. Whoa, 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 whoa. These fucking necromorphs. Uh, they actually look like the Deimoses from RE3. Is that what they are? Oh man, this is pretty cool. This looks like a boiler room. Yeah, that's, um, I think uh, uh, the inscription on the door said was the, the power room. So this is where the self-destruct should be, uh, based on that memo. Man, this is really cool. You know what I thought would be a bigger problem going into this? I thought, especially because I'm doing so much of this commentated, um, I thought immersion would be a much bigger problem. But no, even kind of pulling myself out of the game to do commentary, this is, I, like, it's so easy to get immersed in this. Um, and survival horror really relies on that sense of immersion, because if your head isn't immersed, all the game has is the illusion of being scary. Um, and it's like, if you die, nah, so what, you lose a little bit of progress, but your headspace has to be in the game to- Oh, god damn it. Yeah, speaking of headspace being in the game, I should not be here yet. But yeah, you need your head to be in the game to feel threatened, because you need to have that just close connection with your, your character. Um, and I'm not just talking about, like, immersion as a buzzword, because that's how it gets used a lot. Oh, hey, another, uh, MO disc reader. It's just kind of tucked away, hidden here. Um... Immersion is... Technically, like... How you place yourself, almost spatially, in the game space. Um, and... There are a couple of, of factors for immersion. Uh, one, it needs to be easy to form a mental model of the of the game, of the layout of it. So if you have this textured, rich, interactive world, it's much easier to form a mental model of it. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be realistic, but it needs to have a, like a strong, consistent internal logic so that you can make correct assumptions about how things behave. Um, when too many things don't behave in a way that is consistent with what the game has taught you, you lose that sense of immersion, you lose the ability to mentally model it. Um, when you don't have to contrive excuses to explain away things which aren't consistent, that's, that's like, ideal. Uh, it's also why challenging level design, like, the, the mansion that we've been in the whole game is great. It keeps you focused on the fairly difficult task of navigating so you don't Notice the bald spots where the internal logic kind of breaks down. Like why zombies don't always break the doors down when you enter a room, stuff like that. Uh, there's a certain allowance you can make for... ...when the internal logic of the game isn't totally consistent. Especially when you have other strong elements of the game design um, pulling you in. I mean, there's a gameplay reason, there's an out-of-universe explanation for why that works, because it would make it too stressful for the player, maybe. And you can maybe contrive an explanation in-universe, but it requires those mental gymnastics that kind of, that... If there's too much of that, it'll break the immersion. Um, and then the second major factor is... You, your frame of reference, um has to be in the game itself. That's what true immersion actually is. Uh, also, I'm gonna head back in here. So I feel like I probably missed something while I was going through both times, going in and then backtracking. Um, psychologically, it's called the primary ego reference frame. 
So yeah, when you think of immersion, it's not just a buzzword that you see in reviews a lot. There's actually, um, there's psychological backing to it. And it ties into, uh, this psychological phenomenon known as flow, too. Because when something's very immersive, it's very easy to slip into that state of flow. Um, if you're familiar with the expression, being in the zone, that's more or less what flow describes. Um, I was actually intending to do a whole video on flow, uh, in Super Hexagon. So I don't know how much I want to talk at length about that. Plus, I've already gone on about immersion long enough, primary ego reference frames and jargon. So, we'll run away from now. Uh, how much of this do we have left to explore? I'm thinking I need to take that... the uh, canister we just got back to the refueling room, which... Ooh, I think I actually forgot where that was. That is shitty mental modeling on my part. <laughs> so there's actually a lot more here to explore than I thought. Oh god, this room's cool. Man, the music here is not something I would ever just put on in the background to, to nod my head to, but it's doing a really effective job. What else can I do? Can I get around the shelf? Wait, was this... Oh, I was mashing the, the action button against the wall to pick stuff up. Ooh, shit. Let's deal with you. Ah, more than two shots? Yeah, they're sturdy. They are sturdy. But I'm getting so much ammo now that it's becoming less of a concern. Blood doesn't look like it came from the surgery. Probably all those researchers who just died to the Crimson Head. Fool me once, shame on you. Kill my whole staff in like a conga line of stupidity. Shame on us. Oh, there's the other ammo disc reader. So that should, oh god, I'm in dire straits right now. Woo. Yeah, I still hear those bastards. They look like Navistadors a little bit. Maybe they're, they're uh... The prototype Navista doors. No, that can't be right. Could it? Maybe. I don't know. Oh! That's. Mm. Such luck. Such luck. Oh, I think that's like would have killed me. Oh, I'm so close to doing this. Completely deathless. I'm so, so close. I have to be, like, right next to the end of the game at this point, right? Oh god, what do I want to do? I don't know. Um... I'm looking for the refueling thing that I saw earlier. Don't quite remember where it is. I'm nervous about walking around with low ass health like this. Mmm. Was there. I think there might have been a first aid spray in that room, so. Getting there should be my first priority. Actually, you know what else? There was. Uh, through here, there was a first aid kit that I strategically left on the floor. This is. The method to my madness paying off. Yes! Okay, good, 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 good. Please don't be like two blue herbs. A herb makes up two green herbs. Ah, uh, that's totally acceptable. Totally fine there. Use that. That puts me back to green. 
I like green. I like green. I like that whole lot. Man, this section of the game is brilliant. I love it. For being so small and tight knit, um, the layout's a lot more complex than I was expecting. Okay, this is where I'm getting very nervous. Because if shaken or jarred, it explodes, right? And this is nitroglycerin. Main ingredient uh, is a nitro comp. Running in red could result in explosion, so... I'm really happy to have analog controls here. Like my hand oh man, my hands are sweating. They're actually sweating. This is the most tense I felt throughout the whole game. Man. Oh, this would be a shitty way to die, too. Oh! God, I tapped the analog stick a little bit too hard when I took that corner. Um, I think I just did learn something important, though, and it's that I can maybe run in short bursts, because it didn't just automatically explode the moment I took a running stride. So, do I have a little bit of leeway to play with? I hope so, because I think I'm taking this back to the bug room. Uh, before I do that, though, there's no way in hell I'm not saving. Because <laughs> that's, um, I'm going to have to redo a lot of game if I do die here. Oh, I'm so nervous, you have no idea. What happens if I get attacked? Do, will it explode if I reel back from getting attacked? Oh fuck. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Well, if I do die, then all that ruins is my perfect deathless playthrough. Um, I will only lose a little bit of time. I should be taking this back to the boiler room where I got this, right? Fuck, man, fuck. This is a really good gameplay mechanic. What a brilliant chunk of game to to, to bookend this. And forcing you to walk when you've spent the whole game running um, is such a scary pace shift. Okay, so it's a little bit further, right? Oh, oh god. Because you're suddenly so limited compared to being relatively free of... Oh my god! Oh! Okay, so I'm just gonna walk and then do little short sprints to get away. Oh my god. It's fucking necromorphs. Okay, I'm right there. I'm so close. This is terrifying. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. What? Oh, no. This isn't where I got the capsule. It was the first room. Oh, no. I did all that pro-ass dodging for nothing. Oh, my God. Now I have to backtrack through this. Oh, I fucked up so bad. Come on! And these bugs really suck. They really, really suck at hitting you. Come on, come on, come on. 
Oh man. I should have killed these earlier. Ah, uh, damn it. Okay, cool. It didn't explode. Watch, like, I get the feeling that it can't explode, and I'm just going through all this painstaking. Mo I'm going through all this for nothing. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter now, though. I'm totally. Oh shit. I'm totally fine now. I think. Not. Oh my god. What is going on? No. Maybe I just have to inspect it, please. Oh. I can unclench now. Oh, they have a grab attack for real? I can tase them off the ceiling? Okay. Oh. Muscles relaxing, butt unclenching. Feeling good. Feeling good again. Sick. So. Looks like. Mm, that's the wrong way. Looks like now comes the part where we activate the self destruct sequence and blow the Arkley lab up. Oh my god, that section it was so tense. I love that. Oh my god, this is so good. How did I miss out on this game when I was a kid? How did I do that? I missed out on it not only once when it was just RE1, I missed out on it twice over the course of like eight years. Yeah, RE1 came out in 96? No, I'm sorry, six years. Uh, yeah, RE1 came out in 96, Remake came out in 2002, and I just have missed out on both of those for a long ass time. Oh my god, like I'm totally falling in love with with Resident Evil, like I never thought I would. Like I obviously love RE4 a whole lot, but I don't have that big a place in my heart for RE5 and especially not RE6. Um, I liked Nemesis well enough when I watched Mike play it and then I played through a bunch of it on uh, the Vita. Yeah, like... Uh, Watching Mike play RE3 and playing a little bit of it myself. And then doing the RE4 LP last year for like my fourth or fifth playthrough of that game and now remake. It makes me incredibly sad at how bad Resident Evil has actually become. I've heard good things about Revelations 2, so maybe we're getting back there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maybe we're getting back to Resident Evil being good again. This sounds like save room music. Wait, no, that's not save room music, never mind. This is a track that we've heard a bunch, though. I think it's usually accompanied by bad shit happening. Jill? Chris! You're alive! Of course I'm alive. Jill, there's something big going down, and I don't think we're part of the equation. I have to get you out of here. Ugh, it won't open! Wait, I'll be back to get you out. Okay. No sightseeing, though. You know what? I totally forgot that Chris existed. I didn't realize he got captured. Um, is there anything else I could do with him? It's locked. Okay. I don't know when the hell we're getting him out of there, but I'm content to just leave him behind, to be honest. I hate Chris. Even normal RE1 non roidy Magoo Chris? Okay. Yeah, I'm totally cool with leaving him behind if that's an option. Like, if I miss something that unlocks his cell, oh well. Them's the breaks, man. Bye, Chris. We're heading towards the endgame. You just chill back there. I'm sure you'll be safe in the cell. How did he get captured anyway? 
Jill confirmed to be better than Chris. All right, now we head for the elevator. Let's see what the hell is up here. It's not working. Looks like you've okay. I have to use this switch. So is this gonna bring us deeper underground? Jill. Barry. You could have at least waited up for me, you know. Let's go. Wait, since when the hell are we back to being buddy buddy again? We really are just forgetting the time like a half hour ago or maybe an hour ago when he pulled the gun on me. We are just totally forgetting that, aren't we? Okay. Sure. I mean, I don't know that... I don't know if Jill knows that Wesker is the traitor yet, so... As far as she's concerned, shouldn't it still be Barry? Wesker! Thank you, Barry. Well, what do you know? Oh, don't blame Barry for everything. I hear that his better half and two lovely daughters will be in danger if he doesn't do everything I tell him to. <sighs> Wesker, you're pathetic. Well, you shouldn't worry too much, dear. You'll be free of all this anyway. Why eliminate stars? Believe it or not, that's Umbrella's intention. <sighs> you're just a slave of Umbrella. Smart girl. But I think you misunderstand me. The things you mention are nothing. I'll burn all of them along with this entire laboratory. Barry, go up on the ground and wait there. Barry? <laughs> you gotta love Barry. He must really be afraid of Umbrella. You and Umbrella took his family, you bastard. Oh. <sighs> Umbrella? Well, I used some carrots and sticks to cow him, but it had nothing to do with Umbrella. I just used Barry for my personal interests. Though both you and Barry seem to think I was following Umbrella's orders. What? What are you planning? I guess it's time for show and tell. It's magnificent. For the sake of this thing. You know, I hate goodbyes. <gasps> Barry! Forgive... me? No, you're not to blame. It's Umbrella and Wesker. Even if it meant my family, I couldn't bear turning my back on my friends again. Damn it! <laughs> Jill and Barry together in hell. You want a piece of me? What? Premature. No, Barry! You viral cultured freak! <laughs> There's the weird stilted dialogue and the really dumb writing that I expect out of Resident Evil. It's been strangely subdued up to this point. Holy shit, that, that cutscene. Oh, <laughs> uh, the tyrant here. To get back on track is our final boss of the game. And he is dope looking. 
I had a toy of this exact Tyrant model as a kid. Uh, I've told this story a few times, but it's that it's the Tyrant where it, uh, you push a button on its back and the heart beats. It's pretty cool. Uh, he seems really, really slow though. Uh, so I can play Ring Around the Rosie with him, which kind of makes me sad. Oh, and that's it. Jesus, really. Uh, in the Saturn version, you had two tyrants that you had to fight. Uh, it also had a battle mode where you fought a zombified Wesker. What a pathetic way to die. Why did Barry rush the tyrant instead of just shooting him? Discovery of the G-Virus was, was in fact 21 years after the administration of the Primogenitor... Virus. Uh, Primogenitor. Not progenitor? Uh, the prototype parasite, which we had delivered from a laboratory in France, was administered to the sample specimen. The sample specimen took in the parasite without uh, showing any signs of adverse reaction. The lack of any reaction was an unsolved mystery, but now everything is clear to me now. This isn't Wesker writing this, is it? Who oh, wait, I think I know. The prototype parasite was incubating in the sample specimen's body for 21 years. Um, suddenly mutated. Evolved may be a more appropriate word to describe it. I think this is Birkin writing this. This observation gave me more insight in my research. Though further modification and testing, or through further modification and testing, I was able to derive a method to grade the G that surpasses the performance of the T. This was the breakthrough that would change the future of the BOW's history. The future of the history. God damn it. I can't wait to see the look on Alexia's annoying face when I finally, when I finally announce my research. But unfortunately, I'll have to wait a few more years. William Birkin. Yeah, that is Birkin. So, this is an RE2 tie-in note. Oh. Cool. Barry! Barry! Uh, you're okay. Uh, Jill. Sorry. That was careless of me. Wesker. He's gone. First, let's just get out of here. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Uh, so, doing the voice of Wesker back there, I've been holding on to this for a while, but I didn't want to say it because it would spoil it. Uh, the big reveal about Wesker. Uh, the voice of Wesker is Peter Jessup in this game. The guy who plays him in CVX and RE4, though, um, I can't remember his name. It's Richard something. Um, he based it, he based Wesker on Shere Khan from uh, Jungle Book because his kids loved it so much. I don't actually know that much about Peter Jessup uh, and how he came to do Wesker. So I just figured I would talk about the CVX and RE4 voice actor for him instead. <laughs> um, speaking of voice acting, a while back, Dark Legionnaire told me that Jill's voice actor in the original RE1 was uh, a high schooler named Inez. Uh, she also did Jill's live action bits for the RE1 opening. And she and the rest of the cast were getting eaten alive by mosquitoes while they filmed that. I'll save that for at the end of this story for a little bit. Rescue must have set it off. Let's hurry. Uh, anyway. So they were getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. I looked into it a little bit more, and it gets a lot better. Uh, she had no experience. Uh, and to be fair, she was just a kid, so she would complain about shooting all the time. And Shinji Mikami hated her because of how much she complained. Uh, now here is our classic Resident Evil escape moment. I guess I could go down to the prison cells again and get Chris out. Yeah, because all the locks have been released. I guess I'll go save Chris, fine. Go get him out. Oh, hey, there's shit popping out of the vents now. Uh, so normally, you get a timer at the end of a Resident Evil. So I'm not sure if I'm on a timer yet. 
That camera angle's kind of weird at the top of the stairs. It's like the tightest, most pulled in it, it ever gets. All right, let's go save Chris. Jill. Sorry about the wait. So everything's taken care of? Well, almost. Now let's get the hell out of here. Wait, what does that mean, almost? This is why I would be asking myself if I was Chris. Uh, I'm gonna go back into a cell real quick. I'm gonna see if there's anything cool in there. Like if he just left a note behind or something. Gotta get some value out of his... Oh, this camera angle is neat. Better's covered in filth. And there's shotgun shells, that's about it. Camera angle is neat because it's clearly from the perspective of some kind of security camera in here. Uh, all right, back to... Where am I going back to, actually? I didn't mean to come back in here, I wanted to talk to Chris. Okay, I guess he has nothing to say. No, he's just gonna follow me, right? Follow me slowly at that. Um... Oh, God! There was a lock before I I went underground, before I did that uh, short little puzzle with the gold medals, or the gold and the silver medal. Come on, let's go. There was a big locked gate that I just now realized I have to go through. Oh, man, I forgot about that. I almost forgot about it. Yeah, so I'm just leaving this area now. Alright, so is there a crimson head up here? There might... No, because I decapitated the one up here. And then the other one is mysteriously just gone. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick these herbs up that I passed by earlier. Because we're heading to the end of the game anyway. Might as well have all the healing I can. I'm not coming back here at any point. And... Actually... I'm low health right now. I'm mid health, so I'm not going to heal yet. If I take one more hit, I'm going to pop either the first aid spray or the herbs immediately. But until that happens, if that happens, I think I'm good to go. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'm feeling ballsy. I'm not even going to save. Feeling good about this. Come on, come on, hurry! What do you mean, hurry? Where are they telling me to go? No need to go back. Okay. Where are they waiting? Oh wait, this is the ladder back? Jesus Christ. That's one of the longer load screens too. <laughs> Oh god, I uh, I had that problem again, where I didn't see the door. Just blended into the background. Oh. I don't remember all this shit being here. Wow, they're just handing me shit at the end. Wow. Yeah, okay. I can't pick the other one up. Oh, hey, Brad Vickers, nothing bad happened to you yet. That's good to hear. It's really good to hear, Brad. You're going to be dead by the time RE2 and RE3 roll around. <laughs> oh, shit. I liked you too, Brad. You were a cool guy. Elevator isn't receiving... Oh? Oh, I passed right by that, didn't I? Can't carry anymore. Ah, uh, so I am going to have to heal... 
So I have to waste the inventory space. Okay. Well, let's open this up in case I need it later. That contains another first aid spray. Okay, yeah, there's... I really don't think there's a chance in hell I'm gonna be dying anytime soon. I've t I'm at full health and I have two full heals. Yeah, I'm pretty confident. Plus, look at all this ammo. I have so much ammo. Three minutes to detonation. Damn it! We're almost there! Jill, you just get in contact with Brad. No! We can make it. Jill, ladies first. Chris! Would you let me have my moments too? All right. We'll rendezvous at the heliport. It still confounds me that any of these people know where the heliport is. There's my countdown timer. That's about the only thing that can cause me to game over at this point is running out of time. Which might actually be a legitimate concern. Ooh. Oh, it just brings me up here. Nah, okay. Take the signal rockets. So I have to flag down Brad with the rockets? Okay. You didn't think we were done with the tyrant just yet, right? It's the last boss of a Resident Evil game. Oh, I unequipped it. Whoops. Uh, arc it up. Nah, I missed him. Shit. There we go. Wow, I'm getting tons of free hits on him. Ooh, ooh. And he's not doing shit. What the hell? What is going on? Oh, I'm out of acid shells. Okay. He took a lot, but I got 12 magnum rounds to dump into him. Oh, God. He got shoulder tackled. Uh, oh, and he's off camera. God damn, that did a lot of damage. Okay, well. Okay, that was way too easy. Kill, use it. Kill it, whatever it is. That was way too, oh, way too easy. So this is the last hit. This is a classic uh, RE ending boss rocket launcher moment. That was cool, but I wish it wasn't so easy. That was a really, really fun experience. I'm happy that I just picked this up on a whim and decided to do it. Holy shit, that, what a good-ass game. The ending's a little weird, but... Man, oh, I'm so happy I did this. I didn't appreciate Resident Evil when I was a kid. I didn't really get into the series until RE4. Um, I know I played RE2 at some point, but I, for whatever reason, it, it, it didn't make a lasting impression. Um, 
I appreciate it so little. Uh, I I know I played the RE3 demo and I loved it, but I didn't own the game, so I had no experience with it until Mike's LP last year. I didn't. Yeah. Oh my god. And then shortly after four, when I finally it really did come around to Resident Evil, that's pretty much when it fell to shit. RE5 was fine, and then yeah, after that, all downhill. I was always a Silent Hill kid, and I didn't appreciate Resident Evil until I was older, until like, kinda just now to be honest. And I just foolishly never went back to them, and I'm so happy that this remake, this remaster of Remake came out, because I appreciate it so much more now. What a great game. Uh, the standout element, I think, is the mansion. The mansion is so diverse and full of the, all these unique rooms, these clever shortcuts. It's this big network connected in logical ways that you're consistently backtracking around, and that it just branches out further and further from the center. All, and all that backtracking makes you really familiar with it. It makes it uh, very intimate. Seriously, there's a lot of personality in the mansion. It, it like It's just a clinic on level design. Uh, it's the thing that I've been most impressed by in the whole game, especially since my experience with Resident Evil is limited mostly to the later ones. Jill, you did a fine job. Yeah, I did do a fine job. It's not bad. Deathless, by the way. Deathless. Six and a half hour first playthrough ever of Remake. I'm proud of that. Um... What was I going with that thought, though? Closet key. Oh, costume's cool. Um... Yeah, RE4's level design's alright. It's not this big, elaborate web. and it, But it drops massively downhill after that. Until you get to, like, the molten hot garbage of RE6's corridors with nothing interesting going on in them. RE4 of the modern RE's has the best level design, and even that doesn't hold a candle to this. Like, there's just no, no comparison. Remake eclipses it. The puzzles also felt just right for a horror game. Like, not quite brain dead, not really stressful for the most part. Just right. And it's important that you find that balance... Uh, for survival horror, because Resident puzzle Evil. game puzzles can be hard, because that's your main way of interacting with the game, but that's not the case here, so you have to kind of ride that line. Um, I had to stay engaged, but I almost never got stuck, which is the important part. From a design point of view, that's really tough to achieve, especially as consistently as they did in Remake. Uh, and the trick to good puzzles in horror is to kind of subtly guide the player in such a way that you feel like you solved the puzzle totally on your own without a big neon arrow pointing at the solution. And that's been consistent in Remake. Like, yeah, you want to... As a developer, you want to guide the, the player so they feel like they came to the solution on their own. Um, Yeah, and the rest of the gameplay, like, it just feels really good. Um, I also really enjoyed keeping track of what enemies died in which way, and keeping track of the Crimson Heads that way. Uh, all the unexpected scares when the new things would happen while backtracking, that was really cool. The big spiders are creepy. The game just feels dead perfect. Uh, there's a lot of subtle behaviors and mechanics to play with. A lot of little nuances that you don't see that often. Like, the thing about being able to retrieve daggers if you headshot an enemy after you, uh, use the defensive item, that, that is an awesome detail, and it's such a, a nuanced little thing. Just feels good to play. Man, I couldn't be more pleased with this. Uh, anyway, we are at the end of Resident Evil Remake. As I, uh, mess around here. Oh my god. It just proves that you it, it's never too late to go back and appreciate something you missed out on as a kid. Um, yeah, oh, wow. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. Uh, that's gonna do it for this series. If you like this video, if you like this series, uh, be sure to check back on my channel for daily gaming videos. There's new stuff all the time. There are new shows debuting. And if you want to keep up with that, you can hit the subscribe button and check back on the channel for more daily gaming videos. Um, if you would be so kind, please leave a like, um, leave a comment, I read all of them, and I try to respond to almost all of them. Uh, so yeah, leave a like, leave a Thanks. comment, that would be awesome. Favorite the video, share it with your friends, 
that especially all that really helps because it improves the search ranking it brings more people um who are able to appreciate this stuff and it'd be cool to share it with more people um sharing it on social media would also be super helpful um and that goes for all the videos the whole like comment sub thing um it's cliche but it really does help and finally if you want to support the channel in a different way you can help to improve the channel um and you can help to make it more sustainable by heading on over to patreon.com slash scribe and making a monthly recurring donation that would be cool Again, everything, uh, all your views, all your comments, all that stuff is always so appreciated. Thank you guys so much for watching from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. And take it easy. Have a good one, guys.